السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ توحید و سنت ڈاٹ کام الحمد للہ الحمد للہ اللہ ہدا و صلاۃ وسلام علی عباد اللہ نصطفا خصوصا علی سید الرسل و خاتم الانبیاء و علی آلہ و اصحابہ اللہ نشتبا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قتل ما اوحي اليك من الكتاب واقم الصلاه ان الصلاه تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَصْنَعُونَ وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا آمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَٰهُنَا وَإِلَٰهُكُمْ وَاحِدٌ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ As in our previous sessions, we talked about many of the Sahaba and Sahabiyyat, Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, as part of our series of our ancestors. I have a question before we go any further today. And that is, say we go back to our homes and we start talking to our children about these Sahaba and Sahabiyyat, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een. And our children will say, Dad or Ma'am, you told me a lot about many of the Sahaba, but they were all grown up. Or you told us about some of the youth Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Or you told us about some of the Sahabiyyat, women Sahaba. How about children? If we like to know about any of the Sahaba as a, ch- as, as a child, and we like to know what type of life they lived as children, then which Sahabi are we going to talk about? And especially if you want to talk about some of the young Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. And when we say young, simply means young at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Of course, after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they grew up, but they had a very little opportunity to be around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that was at that very young age. Who do you think would be the Sahabi that you would choose to talk to your children about and give them a perfect and a beautiful example of some of the very young Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een that grew around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you think they can really present a beautiful model for our children and perfect examples for them. For that, we are going to talk about one of those young Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een who was only six years old when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And if you want to be exact, six years and about seven months old. 
when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. But this young Sahabi radiallahu an had such great achievements including a certificate that he has, a degree that he has and that degree says that he is guaranteed the Jannah. At that young age? Yes. At that age? He was given the guarantee of the Jannah. As we look at the life of the Sahabi, not only that it teaches us how did that Sahabi live, more than that it teaches us how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to deal with the younger Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, with young people, with children. What type of encouragement he's giving them? How he's dealing with them? How he's raising them? We have beautiful examples. And the seerah, and this might be one of the most perfect and a very nice example for us. This sahabi, not only that he's the one, he, and he's the only one who carries that degree of Jannah, his brother also has the same degree. His mother had the same degree. His grandmother, his grandfather, his brother-in-law and his uncle, all of them carry the very same degree that these people are guaranteed the Jannah. I'm sure by now you may have guessed who the Sahabi is. That was Hussein bin Ali radiallahu anhu. Grandfather is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Couldn't have anything better. It was a blessing of Allah who chose that boy for that family and blessed that boy to be around those people. Grandmother is Khadija radiallahu anha who's guaranteed the Jannah. Mother is Fatima radiallahu anha, the leader of the women of Jannah. Father is Ali radiallahu anhu, one of al-Ashratul Mubashara. Uncle is Ja'far radiallahu anhu, who's known as Zul Janahayn, the word with, with two wings. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah gave him two wings in the Jannah to fly with. And who was his brother-in-law? Ali radiallahu anhu had four children from Fatima radiallahu anha. Unfortunately, many of us, we don't know about these very important people. We have a lot of VIPs in our lives, but we don't know about these very important people of, in our lives. That were the most important people to know about. Unfortunately, it's the same reason that our children really don't know what to do, which direction to choose, what lifestyle to select, because they don't have these examples. They don't know nothing about these people. Tell children, who are the children of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een? Youth, we have a lot of examples of the youth of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een. In Quran, we always read. Sirata Ladina and Amta Alayhim. Ya Allah, show us the path of those who were blessed by you. If we don't know an Amta Alayhim, and who can be better than Sahaba Ridwanullah Alayhim Ajma'een in this field of an Amta Alayhim? And if we don't know these people that were blessed by Allah and we don't know these Sahaba Ridwanullah Alayhim Ajma'een, then of course, who are an Amta Alayhim that we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us with? And if these people are an'amta alayhim, and we believe in that and we know that, but we don't know nothing about them, how are, how are we going to follow Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim, the path of those that were blessed? If all our children know is, the movie stars, and those different players, 
and they're always watching them and they're looking at with respect to them and looking up to those people and trying to imitate these people, try to follow these people in every step of their life. Then are they following an'amta alayhim or they are following al-maghdubi alayhim and al-dalim? Very clear. We have to look at our souls. And we have to judge it for our souls. That when every time we are standing before Allah with our hands folded as we are doing the salah and we are asking Allah, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Practically, let's come back and see if we are really following صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ or we are following the path of المغضوب عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ What do we know about أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ? Who do we know out of those people? How much do we know about them that we can follow? And many times, we find ourselves just like a person who's standing in the middle of the jungle. Doesn't know which direction to go. Should I go this way, or the other way, or that way? I don't know which way to go. Because doesn't know who to follow. He doesn't know the people that were before him, which direction did they go to? Which route did they select? We don't know none of these things. And therefore we just stand lost over there in the middle of the jungle. We don't know where to go and what to do. This is what happens with our deen and iman and with our faith. Most of the time when we are stuck in a situation, we really don't know. And this is why a lot of times then we end up selecting the wrong direction. And once the person falls on the wrong direction, on the wrong path, it's not easy for him to come back and it's not easy for others to pull him back. It's so steep, so deep, that it's too difficult to come out of it later on. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, which is in Sunan ibn Majah. The hadith is very lengthy. I'm not going to go into the whole, in the, into the details of the hadith. But portion of the hadith is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this iman is like a highway. When you travel on it, there are, Walls on both sides, but there are doors in these walls, and there are curtains. These doors are open, but there are curtains on these doors. And a person sees light behind these, from behind the curtain. He hears a lot of different voices, and he would like to see what's going on over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, there is angel who always tells the person, لا تفتح فإنك إن تفتحه تلجه. Don't even try to see what's behind the curtain. If you just try to see, then you will enter, you will not be able to control yourself. You will get in there, and once you will go in there, then you will you may, not, not, you, you may not, never come back. This is what happens. You may never come back once you get over there. This is why the best thing is, make sure that you don't get over there. You don't even look. Because if you look, if you couldn't control yourself and you wanted to look, then how after looking, how would you be able to control yourself and not get in there? And once you get in there, you may never come back. <coughs> People who are used to missing salah, Missing salah for them is very normal. They don't really feel that I have done something too great or too... I have committed one of the worst crimes in my life. They don't feel that it's even a crime or it's a wrong deed. Yeah, you know, I miss salah. There are so many other people who don't, miss, who, who don't perform salah either. Yeah, if I only miss the salah, there are so many people who don't even believe in Allah. No, take it too light. Thing like salah. Same thing. So in everything, all of these things, as soon as the person steps over there, then just continues with it, and it's difficult to bring that person back. Therefore, it's very important for us to know about these Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, who will teach us what is an'amta alayhim, who will keep us on this track of an'amta alayhim, and protect us from being with al-maghdubi alayhim and al dalim Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu. We talked about him and his family members having the degree of the Jannah. And the question was that who was his brother-in-law who had that degree of Jannah? You all know the name of the brother-in-law. 
but you don't know that he was the brother-in-law in law of Hussein radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu had four children from Fatima radiallahu anhu. More after she passed away because she was the first person to die from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Six months after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she passed away. Then of course Ali radiallahu anhu got married to another woman but he had four children from her and that was Hassan, Hussein radiallahu anhuma and the third one was Muhsin who died at a young age and a daughter whose name was Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha and she got married to Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu so he's the brother-in-law of Hussein radiallahu anhu who also has the guarantee of the Jannah Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anhu Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu along with his brother they grew in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a lot of love for both of these brothers and he used to really play with them a lot and as I said that this, as it is a perfect lesson to look at the life of Hussein radiallahu anhu is a beautiful lesson for our children. At the same time, it's for us to see how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to deal with children. Many times we think that if you become a good Muslim, perfect Muslim, a scholar, imam, and a virtuous person, you aren't supposed to smile anymore. You shouldn't joke anymore. You shouldn't play anymore. That's it. Be so serious that people will be afraid to talk to you. This is our image. And we have borrowed that also from others. And they go even a step further that he is not even allowed to get married. So that no relationship with human beings anymore. That's it. Cut yourself from every person. Go and live in the jungle. So don't even get married. Once in a church. To attack the very same thing. A priest asked me, asked me a personal question. He asked me, how many wives do you have? Attacking that ruling of Islam, allowing more than one. So I asked him, how many children do you have? If you are telling me that this is wrong to marry more than one, I'm telling you it's wrong not to marry because you don't have no children. You are so unfortunate that you don't have no children. You can't get married. Anyway, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to play with these children. And we find him sometime asking Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhumah to sit on his back. And he says, I am your right. Sometime he's making them sit on his stomach. Sometime they are sitting on his thighs, on his legs. Sometime he's carrying them on his shoulders and walking out. And he was seen playing with these children a lot of times. To the extent that sometime it was surprising for some of the newcomers that this is how much he plays with children. And the hadith also read about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tickling them on their stomach, putting his nose there, yashummahuma. He used to put his nose on their stomach or on their face and tickling them. So all of these ways of playing with children and spending time is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. This is why one of the scholars of Islam says that whenever I go home, and I'm about to spend time with my children and start playing with my children, I just pause for a minute and think that this is also a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that throughout the time I'm playing with my family and with my children, I know that I'm getting the reward of the sunnah. What a beautiful deen. What a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're enjoying your time with your children and getting the reward of following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, provided we make that intention and we keep in mind that this is part of the sunnah also.
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very happy at the birth of Hussein radiallahu anhu and the first thing he did for him was he took a date after chewing the date he took a little bit of it and applied it in the mouth of Hussein radiallahu anhu this is called tahniq in Islam and this is sunnah which means get a virtuous person to choose something sweet and then apply it in the mouth of a child so that the first thing would go in the stomach of the child will be the saliva of that virtuous person as they used to do get it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. And by this Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us another very important message. Each and everything that goes in the stomach of the child will have an effect on his life. This is why he's having his saliva go into the stomach of the child. That will be the first thing. And telling us that from the very first day whatever goes in the stomach of the child will have an effect on the life of this child. And now when we start bringing haram at home, our sources of income are haram. We are buying things that are haram and feeding our children those things and then we expect them to follow the book of Allah and follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow the steps of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een it's not their fault when they don't it's what we are feeding them we feed them haram they will do haram and the result of it will be the same We cannot apply a dirt on our body and expect people to tell us that you have a lot of nice fragrance. All of these are najasas that go into the body. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, مَا نَبَتَ لَحْمٌ مِّن سُحْتٍ إِلَّا وَالنَّارُ أَوْلَى بِهِ Whichever pan of the flesh grows from haram, it deserves to be thrown in the hellfire. We think that we are doing a favor to our family members by bringing all of this into our homes. By bringing all of this haram in our home. But remember, we are only providing the means to be thrown in the hellfire and to just keep on getting burned in the hellfire. This is why Sahabiyat used to advise their husbands every morning as they are leaving home that please, don't bring anything haram to our home. We will starve to death, but we are not willing to bring anything and have anything that is haram in our home. You can't find a job, you can't find a work, you can't bring nothing. Don't bring nothing, but don't bring it from haram sources. Advice of Sahabiyat at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to their husbands. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the adhan in the ear of the child of Hussein radiallahu anhu. He himself called it. Here I'd like to mention two points there. One is, we don't find in the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the adhan for the salah. He used to be the imam all the time. Someone else will call the adhan. But yes, he called the adhan at the birth of children in their ears. And the second thing we learn from this is that even everything the child will hear after birth will have an effect on this child's life. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making sure that the first thing child will hear is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And will learn that Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Seventh day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the aqiqah. But we find in the hadith when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the aqiqah, for in, on behalf of Hussein radiallahu anhu, he sacrificed only one lamb. Whereas we know for boys we sacrifice two. But he sacrificed only one. Why? Insha'Allah, we will talk about it and the rest of the life of Hussein radiallahu anhu in our next sessions. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.